Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review video topic 6.8 on solar energy. So when we're talking about solar energy, there's multiple ways you can get energy from the sun. And you know, the benefits of course, um, overall are that you're never gonna run out of sunlight. The uh, trick is how do you harness that energy, right? So, um, you know, we've found multiple ways to do this um, and there's different uh, situations. And of course there's pros and cons overall for each one, but gathering solar energy is something that um, you know, is sustainable and can be uh, lasting if you do it right. So there's um, three main types of uh, gathering solar energy. The first is where you use photovoltaic cells, okay, um, trying to kind of emulate a little bit of uh, photosynthesis. Then you get active solar energy systems. That's where you use some energy to help warm water in your home. And passive is where you don't use any energy, you just situate the home so that it gathers the most or doesn't. Um, gather as much solar depending on where you live. Um, and of course, each one of these has their own limitations, but they all have advantages. So, um, and of course, the big caveat I want you to think about is that you have to have a good amount of solar energy to make this work. You know? If you're living in, um, you know, northern Canada or Alaska, where you're going to end up with uh, very dark uh, amounts of time throughout the year, it's just not going to be something that you yourself can uh, obtain very well, right? So the first one is photovoltaic solar cells. So this one we use um, sunlight being captured by these anti-reflective coats. So you want them to be able to uh, gather in and not reflect the sunlight back. You want it to be able to hold it. And then you need to have a semiconductor, uh, which is a metalloid from the, you know, if you remember the periodic table, those are the ones that have properties of both. Silicon is going to be the one that causes the electrons to jump, right? So, um, or not causes, but is the sunlight is what causes the electrons to jump on the silicon. And so what's going on there is you can have one item like this light bulb here, for example, be powered by a solar cell. This happens a lot with like street lights, or you can have the entire house be powered by this. And then you might be able to either store that if you have an extra box or send back your excess electricity to the power grid. Now, of course, the limits to this are going to be, uh, it's limited by availability, right? If you don't live in an area where there's already sunlight, it's really not gonna be something that's an option for you. Um, and of course, it, you need to mine for the silicon, so that's gonna have consequences to it when you're um, trying to gather that, uh, that form of energy. And so um, the active solar is going to uh, be a way where what you do is you use energy already to pump water. You pump water towards the area of your house where the sunlight's gonna be the most. And that has a water tank um, that stores that warm water. And then using radiators in your house, you can exchange the heat around there. So it's a pretty cool way of um, uh, heating liquid right through this mechanical and electric equipment um, and of course you can collect and even store the energy but it tends to be expensive right so you have to have the right area for that and so um, another way is going to be through passive solar heating that's going to be where you situate your home in the winter to either get more sunlight to keep your house warm or if you live in an area where it's very hot you move your house or you build your house so that in the sun in the summer the sun doesn't warm your house too much and you don't have to have spend so much on electric bills so um, the downside is that any 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 energy you gain or avoid in this case it can't be stored or saved for any later use so there's no need for mechanical equipment it's just about a matter of designing your home that way and the downside is if it's not already pre-designed then you're just not going to be able to use that or you're going to have to spend money to rearrange or redesign your homes and so the overall pros and cons you're going to get a very low environmental impact right in the event of a photovoltaic cell you might have to mine for silicon, which will destroy habitat. Um, and it tends to be what we call clean energy because it's not gonna release pollutants. Um, now the mining and the uh, capturing of materials may at the beginning, but long-term it won't. Okay, the downside is it, it can be expensive. Now it has gotten less expensive in the last 20 years, um, but it's still something that uh, we have to worry about. The price may be a prohibitive factor. Um, and then of course you get large solar farms um, if you want to put those out in the desert or where there's already a lot of sun, you're going to also damage ecosystems that way. So, you know, there are places where you can create these big arrays of really awesome solar panels, but 
you might have to destroy habitat or area where you know uh, range or ranch land was used before that is not able to be used anymore so those are the um, kind of the pros and cons you have to weigh before you go for that and the ap exam may ask you for questions about the pros and cons they may they're not going to ask you why it you know why is it so awesome they're going to might ask well what about the downsides what about the upsides so it's important to keep that in mind so here's some more sources that might help you um, in your work and research for this and uh, hopefully they'll be helpful and hopefully this was helpful thank you